You're watching ACC Baseball on ACC Network Extra. Hello, everybody, and welcome inside the Durham Bulls Athletic Park. Getting ready for game two between Georgia Tech and Duke. Yellow Jackets 14-10 winners yesterday alongside our chase. I'm Ryan Craig. Cloudy for now, although pretty promising looking skies. However, weather and bad weather on the way in a couple of hours. Hoping to get this one in uninterrupted as we take a look at game one from yesterday. Pretty much the Baron Radcliffe show. Four for five, three runs scored, six RBIs, two home runs. Went the opposite field for one of them. Yanked one to right field for the second. He was terrific yesterday, Art. Without question, he was the best player in the stadium. And there you see the numbers. Four hits, two home runs, a double and a single. Six runs batted in. He really set the tone for yellow, the Yellow Jackets uh, as they cruise to a landmark 14-run evening. Two for four with a run scored and four RBIs for Matt Mervis, including his sixth home run of the season. That came in the bottom of the eighth. Made this a very interesting game. That brought the Blue Devils back to within 12-9. A three-run game all of a sudden put some game pressure on Georgia Tech, but the Yellow Jacket offense would answer the bell once again. Two more runs in the top of the ninth. Ninth help extend the lead. Tristan English came on to close things out for the Yellow Jackets. And here is Bill Chileri, who will be tasked with trying to contain this Yellow Jackets offense, which for the fourth straight game put up 14 or more runs yesterday. Starts Luke Waddell off with a strike. Chileri on the season two and two. This is start number 13, just over 54 innings pitched. 39 strikeouts, 19 walks. Waddell takes strike two. Chuck Pack in behind home plate after standing down the first baseline yesterday. Frank Sylvester, who was calling balls and strikes, moves to third. There's a look at the Yellow Jackets lineup. Exact same as it was in game one, and why not? That's a lineup that produced 15 hits, 14 runs. Sometimes don't want to overthink anything if you're Danny Hall. Certainly ain't broke, and so why not? Waddell's been terrific this year, as have a vast majority of the Georgia Tech hitters. Yesterday, Waddell two for six with a run scored. Ground ball towards second, making the play relatively Easily is Joey Loperfito, and there's one away. In behind Chileri. No change to the Blue Devil lineup. Gallagher, Taylor, and Cheek left to right in the outfield. Nichols, Murray, Loperfito, Mervis, and Rothenberg behind the plate. Yellow Jacket offense got to Ben Gross early yesterday, Art, and forced him to throw a ton of pitches. Georgia Tech only came away with two runs after a bases loaded, nobody out situation. You and I talked about how that feels kind of like a push for the offense and the defense. Nobody feels great about it, but nobody feels bad about it. But I think that set the tone for game one. Made Gross work really hard. Certainly shortened his outing. Got into the Duke bullpen. It just felt like it, it started and never stopped for the Georgia Tech offense yesterday. Yeah, Gross had good stuff, just didn't have command early. Uh, obviously, uh, Georgia Tech's offense is so proficient, and they can take walks. They can bang the ball out of the park, as we saw last night. And so Ben Gross's efficiency was lower than what needed to be for him to be effective. Uh, Chaleri here uh, mixing in fastballs and breaking pitches early on in the strike zone. And that's what it's going to take for him to slow down this Yellow Jacket offense. He's going to have to work inside and outside and keep everything down uh, he doesn't throw hard enough to, he's going to blow guys away like we saw last night with gross uh, but he's uh, effective when he's moving that ball all around the strike zone picking his spots to get the fastball going and his off-speed stuff will be uh, critical today uh, to keep the yellow jacket batters off balance two and two the count to Michael Goldberg, who comes in batting 375 on the season. One for three on the day with two runs scored, and that actually dropped his average. Georgia Tech playing offense with 
just a, an elite level of confidence. You can tell uh, each and every batting approach uh, up and down the lineup. Obviously, they've got power. They've got speed. They've got efficiency. And uh, really fun to, to watch Coach Hall's team play uh, watching tape uh, in preparation for this one you could just tell they, they have an aura about themselves on offense that just bleeds confidence through and through the lineup and uh, they uh, they really have a great approach right now uh, offensively and it's fun to watch talk about their ability to do a little bit of everything yesterday 15 hits five doubles three home runs nine walks had a couple of sacrifice flies as well, so they can manufacture runs. Full count to Goldberg. He stays alive. You mentioned last night, uh, you know, 15 hits as well as drawing nine walks uh, you know if you want to play negative nelly 14 runs somebody's saying well we should have had more and, and that's how proficient and explosive this lineup is amos willingham kind of gets lost in the shuffle he picked up the win went five innings gave up two earned runs three runs total as chileri sets goldberg down on strikes only the 22nd strikeout of the season for Goldberg. He and Waddell, very tough to retire on strikes. You see Chilari there keeping that ball down in the strike zone, right at the knees, and that's where he's going to be effective. If he can keep it down there and move that pitch in and out with the fastball, mixing in that breaking pitch that can come uh, in different angles, uh, both throwing it for a strike and then having it start in the strike zone and leave the strike zone for a potential swing and miss. Uh, off to a good start efficiency-wise and a great approach for Chileri. Georgia Tech sent eight batters to the plate yesterday in the top of the first inning. Chileri hoping for a much cleaner start to the game and a very different look for Georgia Tech from the mound today for the Blue Devils. Righty versus lefty. Gross has that at times overpowering fastball that tends to be up in the zone. Chileri doesn't have quite the velocity. He's going to work more inside, outside of the plate, use the breaking ball, stay lower in the zone. So wouldn't be surprised. Maybe a time through the lineup for Georgia Tech, even with as vaunted an offense as they have, to kind of reset their timing a bit. McCann swings through that one. McCann 0 for 5 yesterday, the only starter for Georgia Tech that didn't have a hit. Did score a run and draw a walk, however. McCann going 0 for 5 yesterday could be similar to Steph Curry not scoring in the first half last night. Curry went on to score 33 in the second half. See what McCann does here in game two. Two balls, two strikes, two away. So Georgia Tech offense philosophically likes to work the count, see a lot of pitches, and even in a relatively clean inning thus far, Chileri is going to end up throwing at least 20 pitches. Normally you think one, two, three, probably something in the 10 to 15 pitch range. Bullpen's relatively healthy for this game, too. Jonathan Hughes threw 55 pitches for Georgia Tech. Got to figure he's not available today. Aaron Beasley threw two and a third innings, 50 pitches for the Blue Devils. He's probably not available as... Same you could say about Jack Carey, who threw 43 pitches. McCann staying alive in the at-bat against Chileri. The 2-2 two -two goes with the breaking pitch one more time. McCann sends it sky high. Drifting into basically center field is Ethan Murray. Murray makes the play. Jaleri gets the 1-2-3 inning. Top of the order for the Blue Devils when we return on ACC Network Extra. Say yes to Camry XSE's Sport Tune suspension and say yes to 
through responsive handling. With responsive handling, you push the limits of fun. Push the limits, and you feel like a stunt driver in a movie about you. Say yes to Camry. Final couple of warm-up pitches for Connor Thomas, 7-1 on the season, making his 13th start. 82 and a third innings pitched. Thomas has gone at least five innings in every start this year, at least six in all but two of his starts. Been tremendous this season. Only loss coming on February 23rd to UCLA. the National Player of the Week and the ACC Pitcher of the Week in late March after throwing a complete game shutout on 96 pitches at Louisville. The Blue Devil batting order. A couple of tweaks today. Same hitters in the lineup. Gallagher moves up to five. Cheek drops to six. Maxwell moves up to eight. And Nichols drops to nine. Everybody else in the same spot. Lobrofito one for four with two runs scored, a walk, and an RBI. A couple of hard hit baseballs as well. A bit unlucky for him at times. Yeah, yesterday uh, he lined out in his first at bat to the shortstop, relatively sharply hit ball, and then had a hard line drive right back up the box that Willingham took off the shoulder that ended up being a recorded pop out. Coach Chris Pollard in his seventh season at Duke's really turned this Duke baseball program around. NCAA tournament now the expectation. Super regional appearance a year ago and a win away from Omaha. Loper, you know, first pitch swinging, lifts that one deep to left field. How about gone? Joey Loperfito, third home run of the season in the Blue Devils on a single pitch. Take a 1-0 lead in game two. That's how you respond to a game one defeat in a three game series. Joey Loperfito wasting no time. Blue Devil offense staying aggressive as they have all season long. And we'll get a good look here at the replay. Loperfito settling in. Fastball inside part of the plate. Got the arms extended early and just drives it to deep center field for a home run. Kenny Taylor takes strike one. Loperfito, a guy missed a lot of time this year with an injury. Team is 14 and six since he has been back. High chopper handled by Webb. Taylor is retired. We talked a little bit about it yesterday in game one, but for those that didn't watch the game, this Duke lineup, both offensively and defensively, very much affected by Loperfito's absence and then affected positively by his return able to return to their more natural positions defensively and in the lineup. Here's Mervis, who we talked about a moment ago. Home run yesterday, two for four. Then he takes a strike. It's only the eighth home run that Thomas has given up this year, but it's the fourth start in a row that he has surrendered one. ahead of Mervis, 0-2. Thomas obviously has had a terrific season. You don't get to 7-1 with 82 strikeouts in now 82 and two-thirds innings pitch without being on top of your game. He's gotten some nice run support, certainly, especially these last six or seven starts, double figures in four of the last six starts. The 1-2 to Mervis. 
Jarvis does well to stay alive there. The one two toward English at first and then two outs. Interesting to see that neither team making any adjustments to their batting order given the change from righties to lefties on the mound. Not necessarily a surprise, but you see some lineups change quite a bit. Two, three different guys maybe, or spots in the order. At this point in the season, do see a lot of times settling in on a lineup. And there's Ethan Murray who stays absolutely scorching hot. He drops in a single, and Murray came into today in conference play the 25 league games, batting a team best 345. And that average obviously will increase a two out single. It's his 31st hit in league play. Two for four yesterday with a run scored and two RBIs. Kyle Gallagher, an 0 for four day yesterday with a walk. Had an error in left field, batting fifth, hoping to keep the inning alive for the Blue Devils. Looks at ball two. Murray six for seven in stolen base attempts on the season. Not running, and Gallagher takes ball three. Good patience here by Gallagher. You mentioned the over four performance yesterday. Could have come out being a little over aggressive, but it showed good patience here. Takes 3 0, maybe even taking 3 1. It's a guy, Connor Thomas, does not walk very many people, does not have more than two walks in any start all year. He's only walked 15 batters compared to 82 strikeouts on the season coming into today. 3-1, just a bit low. So that's walk number 16 here in 2019. Two at-bats in a row that Gallagher has drawn a walk. Started the day 0 for 4. Now has reached base in two consecutive at-bats. You just wonder, baseball is just one of those games. You make one little adjustment, start to see the ball better. Two straight times now he's reached on a base on balls. Passes the baton to Chase Cheek. Cheek yesterday two for three with a run scored. And that one dribbles into right field. Around comes Ethan Murray who is off and running with two away. Gallagher advances to second. Chase Cheek comes up. With a two-out RBI single, and the Blue Devils have turned the tables on Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets led 2-0 at one point yesterday. The Blue Devils take that identical lead here in game two. Here's what I like about this approach for Chase Cheek. Just ahead of him, Kyle, Kyle Gallagher drew a walk against a pitcher that doesn't walk batters. So conventional wisdom says, okay, let's make him throw a strike. We'll see where he is in his approach, but no, stay aggressive. You get a pitch you like and able to pull it through the hole on the right side for an RBI single. Here's the switch hitting Michael Rothenberg batting from the right side. I think it's a great point. Duke has been aggressive too with its approach. Gallagher may be the exception, but a couple of first pitch swinging. Loperfito swung at the first pitch the entire game. To Kenny Taylor up there swinging quickly. Same with Chase Cheek. Rothenberg leans into that one, sends it towards straightaway center, retreating quickly as Wilhite would a play. Nick Wilhite saves probably two runs with that play. Hard contact, but tremendous defense. The Yellow Jackets limit the damage, but the Blue Devils take a 2-0 lead after one, trying to even the series at one apiece. At American Furniture Warehouse, we have the largest selection of dining room collections to choose from. This Memorial Day, come on by and check out our latest in-stock selections at the lowest prices anywhere, anytime. American Furniture Warehouse. I'm Darren Schenker. 
When a client comes to our firm after an accident, we take on the responsibility of returning to them what was taken away. Because a few short seconds can change your life forever. Lost income, past and future medical bills, pain and suffering, past, present, and future. Our clients don't seek charity, they seek justice. Call 222-2222 for your free consultation. Backus and Shanker, our passion is justice. Be a VIP at the 2019 ACC Baseball Championship, May 21st through 26th. Enter for your chance to win today at theacc.com slash baseball VIP. Get to spend the entire day with Art Chase, hearing stories of his profound baseball career. For now, Bill Chileri looking for a shutdown inning for the Blue Devils to try to back up that two-run Spot put up there by the offense. He'll deal with English, Radcliffe, and Hall. Easier jobs there have been. Three home runs between English and Radcliffe yesterday in game one. And the shutdown inning is what was missing from the Blue Devil pitching staff last night. Duke kept trying to creep back in the game all night long. But Georgia Tech's offense up to the challenge each and every time, it seemed, and just able to score runs when need be, not allowing the momentum to really shift into the first base dugout. English two for six in total. Two runs scored, two runs batted in. Chilary goes upstairs, changes the eye level on the Georgia Tech first baseman and closer. Absolutely love the two-way players in the college game. Really neat to watch these guys, so talented. Can play in the field, can obviously swing the bat in English's case, and then when called upon, being able to come in and close a game out. Similar to another corner infielder that played for the Blue Devils last year, Jack Lebowski, third baseman and closer. Chilary misses, and it's three and one now to English. What a play by Nick Wilhite in center field. That one is hit toward Nichols across the diamond in time. Jalari has retired the first four Yellow Jackets. That's one very early on that you could put a pin in. And depending on how the rest of this game plays out, that could end up being a game deciding play in the very first inning. And that just goes to show you the, the quality of a ball club that Georgia Tech is. You, know, you, you talk about the offense with a 300 batting average and all the home runs, the stolen base efficiency, you know, but they fielded a 972 clip. And, and there's probably not too many teams in college baseball that, that hit a 300 clip and fielded a 970 clip. And uh, defense on display in the bottom of the first inning and a terrific play to end the inning. Speaking of terrific, probably undersells the game one that Baron Radcliffe had showed you the highlights earlier. Home runs to both left and right field. A single and a double as well. Four for five day with six RBIs. Radcliffe takes ball three. Interesting to see what Radcliffe does here. Three and oh, whether Trelary challenges him with a pitch. Whether Radcliffe is taking all the way. Inside for ball four. First walk issued by Chileri. First base runner for the Yellow Jackets. And that'll bring up Colin Hall, who was two for three with two runs scored yesterday. Four, five, excuse me, different Yellow Jackets with multiple hits in game one. Waddell, English, Radcliffe, Hall, and Nick Wilhite. Good shot there. Radcliffe and Mervis chatting it up. Probably comparing 
home run lengths from last night as they each put a charge into one. Obviously, Radcliffe with two. See Radcliffe wearing that thing on his hand. Protect your hand and fingers as a base stealer. 0-2, which is ahead of Hall. One thing know. I've always wondered about that, though, you have this mitt on. So that's an extra inch or two now that your hand is getting to the bag. And is there a limit on how large that thing can be? Because if it's me, I'm going up there with one that extends about a foot and a half go as, to the, as Hall uh, is retired on strikes. Go to the marketing table and get a foam finger. Absolutely, right? I've always wondered about that, if there is some maximum size that that thing can be. Every inch matters in stolen bases. Second strikeout for Chileri. Two away here in the second as Austin Wilhite, twin brother of Nick Wilhite, who made the outstanding play in center field, steps to the dish for the first time. Extra bases for him, Radcliffe, off and running with two away. He will stop at third. Georgia Tech, two runners in scoring position with two away. And it's up to Jackson Webb to deliver with a two out hit. The third baseman, number 35, Jackson. Pitch not anywhere close to being a strike. So nice piece of hitting to go down and in and just Jerk that ball down the line. Nichols gave it a Brooks Robinson-esque dive, but came up empty. Austin Wilhite becomes the third Georgia Tech hitter with double-digit doubles on the season. Important early at bat in this game, you figure. Chance to put another zero on the board for Chileri. For Webb, a chance to tie the game, perhaps more for Georgia Tech here in the second. It always feels like there's five or six milestone at-bats or plays in a game. This feels like it could be one of them here in the early going, although with the way these two teams have been swinging the bat here thus far in the weekend, 24 runs combined, you don't necessarily get the sense this is going to be a pitching duel. 24 runs, I should say, coming into today, Duke. Adding two to that total. The 1-1 one, one, upstairs, 2-1. and one. Interesting sequence here by Chaleri. Breaking ball, then followed that up with back-to-back -back fastballs. Jackson Webb, one for two. A run scored, a run driven in, two walks last night. Fastball finds the zone for Chileri. Two balls and two strikes with two away. Game two starting. About 13 and a half hours after game one ended last night with the time moved up. The 2-2 from Chileri, looking to go on the outside corner. Thought he had it. Chuck Pack disagreed, so it's a full count. Chileri threw it right where Rothenberg wanted it. Just an inch or two off the plate. First base open. You don't have to give in here and groove one, but you... Time is called. Chileri finishes his pitch anyway. Start number 22 on the season for Jackson Webb, limited at bats, but batting 373. Coming into the game, 31 for 83 on the season. Worked his way into the lineup and never relinquished the spot. The 3 2 pitch. Chileri goes inside and just misses again. Two very borderline pitches. Chileri gets neither call. 
And so the bases are loaded here with two outs. How about the two tough takes, by the way? Jackson Webb laying off both of those pitches. That one just a bit outside. This one just a bit, I assume, inside and not low. That second one, I think, was even closer because coming from the lefty, figure may have caught part of the plate on the way down and in, if you will. So now base is loaded, and Chaleri starts Nick Wilhite off with a strike. Wilhite with an excellent defensive play, hoping to help his team at the plate as well. The 0-1 pitch. Line into left field. Gallagher comes up throwing. Georgia Tech sends the runner. Play at the plate. Not going to be in time. Nobody backing it up for the Blue Devils. Chileri does gather it in eventually, but that allows Wilhite to move from first to second. Game of inches. Chileri doesn't get the call. Nice piece of hitting. What a start to the game for Nick Wilhite. He's accounted for, in my mind, four runs. Save two, drove in two, and it's a 2-2 game here in game two. Really nice piece of hitting just to get good, solid contact and good speed on the base pass. Such an important top of the second for Georgia Tech. It's been a tremendous last 10 minutes for them. A defensive play to end the first, and now immediately you tie things up just when the Blue Devils are starting to feel good about themselves. Back to the top of the order with Waddell, who grounded out in his first at bat. The 1 0 misses, 2 0. Larry's last start came in game two against VCU. Blue Devils played a doubleheader after exam week. Four innings, six hits, three earned runs, a walk, and four strikeouts. Took a no decision in that game. Nice job by Waddell dropping that one in front of Kent Taylor. So Georgia Tech may be an inch away from the inning being over on two consecutive pitches. Instead, it's back-to-back, -back, two out, two RBI singles. And the Yellow Jackets have gone from down 2-0 to up 4-2 in a matter of minutes. There you see Waddell going the other way. And with two outs. Nick Wilhite scores easily behind Webb running on contact. In this game already, you know, just... Eight outs old has provided plenty of excitement. Certainly the home run to lead things off by Loperfito in the bottom of the first. The defensive play in center field by Will Height. And then, as you just mentioned, Ryan, back to back, two out, two run singles for the Yellow Jackets. And there's just no break in this lineup. You know, at the bottom of the order doing plenty of damage. The, the Wilhite brothers, Austin with a double, Nick with a two-run single, and then you're able to flip it over to Waddell at the top, who comes through in the clutch. Georgia Tech now three for four with two outs in game two. Yeah, the bottom of the order for Georgia Tech looks like the top of the order for most other teams. 6789 batting 307 282 373 303 
The 1-1 from Chileri, who nears 50 pitches. That one is floated toward right field and going to drop in fair territory. Cheek is there, a long throw to third, and Waddell is going to come home. So the wheels have come off a bit here for the Blue Devils, who thought they might have been out of the inning. Now another run will come home as that ball got entirely away. We'll have a conversation about that. It's all smiles for the Yellow Jackets, who have plated six. Coach Pollard will come out to ask about this. Cheek sets his feet and just throws errantly to third base. Skips away from Nichols and into the stands, and so they'll advance over two bases, who they'll say was already on second. Which he wasn't, so this will be interesting. Coach Chris Pollard was actually ejected from yesterday's game one. After arguing balls and strikes, this is a very different type of conversation here. Just looking for some clarification. As the umpiring crew gets together. So the question is whether it's a single and a two base error or a double and a two base error. That's the difference between it being six to two and five to two. Waddell has already come around to score and they will send Goldberg back to third. And now, of course, the conversation with Danny Hall. Two base advancement, and he had already occupied first base. So Goldberg will be sent back to third base. Danny Hall satisfied, if not entirely pleased, with the explanation. Of course, he would have rather number six been run number six. No RBI for Goldberg, being that Waddell was standing on third base when the throw went into the bleachers. So Goldberg on third. That brings up McCann. Rothenberg blocks that one nicely. Blue Devils were a pitch away, maybe an inch away from this being a 2-0 game heading to the bottom of the second. And with two outs, Georgia Tech has strung together five runs and counting. As McCann fouls that one away. Fifty pitches for Chileri. So similar result as we saw last night with Duke starter Ben Gross. This just happened in the second inning. There you see 20 balls, 30 strikes. Gross needed 91 pitches to get nine outs. Two balls and a strike. Chileri has needed 51 pitches to get five outs. Almost the exact same pace. Another breaking ball misses. Two and, excuse me, three and one. Chase Cheek charged with the error. Duke right fielder. Error number two on the season for Cheek. The 3-1 misses, and McCann reaches as this top of the second simply will not end for the Blue Devils. Georgia Tech, as they have done so often. You had a stat yesterday, I forget what it was, five-plus runs and X number of games. You could add another game to that list already here in the top of the second. Second game, Georgia Tech has scored five runs in the first three innings here in the series. 
English comes to the plate for the second time here in the second inning as Georgia Tech has batted around. Delay here is Georgia Tech first base coach had accumulated plenty of protective gear from all the base runners. Including. That's when you know you've had a pretty good inning. When you have to take all the body armor off from guys that have gotten on base because the guys waiting on deck needed back. Baron Ratcliffe walked with one out in this inning and first base coach still had his protective gear. That's amazing. And, he, and, and then he rolls into the on deck circle and says, wait a second, I'm missing something. That's funny. It's certainly not the first time in the history of baseball that somebody's batted around, but I don't know if I've seen it illustrated in that way. I can that first. You know, McCann technically 0 for 6 in the series. And that's now the third time, though, he's reached base. He's finding his way on. Lengthy conversation, Dusty Blake, Bill Chilary, and Michael Rothenberg. Eventually broken up by Chuck Pack. James Ramsey, former first round Major League draft pick and All American ACC Player of the Year at Florida State, hitting coach for Georgia Tech. And man, has he done an excellent job! Graduated in 2012. This offense is absolutely lethal. It's consistent. It's persistent. This is two outs. This this was down to your final strike in the top of the second. Down 2-0. You're up 5-2. Runners at first and third. You've sawed off a couple of innings from Chilari on the back end, certainly, with the number of pitches he's had to throw. Second day in a row, you've done that to a starting pitcher. And English leans into one here for the second day in a row toward the Blue Monster. And at the base of the wall, Gallagher makes the play. Tristan English just gets underneath it. That close to extra bases and more runs for the Yellow Jackets. With two outs, Georgia Tech scores five runs in the top of the second and takes a three-run lead here in Durham. You can turn left, you can turn right, or if you're behind the wheel of the all-new BMW X5, you can decide not to turn at all, unless you absolutely have to. The all-new BMW X5, confidence doesn't take detours. Hurry in to receive exceptional offers on the all-new 2019 BMW X5. Extra power button, extra power button. You're looking buff. May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. Connor Thomas back to the mound after a lengthy break in the dugout. As a starting pitcher, you're fine with that if your offense is going to put up five runs. How about the end of the first and the beginning of the second inning? Nick Wilhite preventing a 2-0 game from becoming a 4-0 game and then keeping the inning alive and driving in the first two runs for Georgia Tech. He alone accounting for a four-run swing that became, in some ways, you could say, a seven-run swing with the five runs in total the Yellow Jackets put up in the top of the second. I, you don't want to overstate it, but that's extra bases he took away from the Blue Devils and two runs certainly, and maybe they continue on in that inning. Who knows what happens from there? And then with two outs, a two-run single that gets the rally officially up and going for Georgia Tech. Run-saving defensive plays are usually bigger than meets the eye in college baseball. And for him to take away an extra base hit that would have plated two, even though it's the first inning, 
And even though Georgia Tech's got this tremendous statistically induced offense, and they've proven just about every week during the course of the season how good they are, but that was a pivotal play here early on. Because what it does, obviously, Duke took a 2-0 lead, but it brought momentum back to close to even. Probably didn't pull momentum all the way into the Georgia Tech dugout because you're still down 2 to nothing. But it told the Yellow Jackets, we're okay. You know, it, it's not 4 nothing. It's only 2 nothing, And uh, tremendous defensive play, and it just uh, seemed to spark the Yellow Jackets. And then, obviously, two outs, a runner on first base, bottom of the order, and then Georgia Tech just explodes. A double, a walk, a, then three singles in a row. And it's just a nice piece of piece of offense. Waddell across in plenty of time as Maxwell is retired. Now the exact opposite situation. Thomas looking for a shutdown inning, get the Georgia Tech offense back to the plate. Here's Erickson Nichols. Nichols at 0 for 3 day with three strikeouts yesterday. First pitch swinging. Foul ball into foul territory off the first base line, and there are two away. Duke has been relatively aggressive throughout the day. But with that at bat, this man being a very quick inning for Connor Thomas. Here's Joey Loperfito, started the game off. First pitch, leadoff home run, gave Duke a 1-0 lead. Thomas goes off speed for a strike. Goes back to the off speed pitch, and Loperfito Sends that one into right center field. Wide turn for Loperfito, and he digs out a double. How about that hustle for Loperfito out of the box? A ground ball to right center field, and he's on second base. You said it there, right out of the box, going full speed. He gets about two-thirds of the way down, makes his mind up and just beat the play. So a home run and a double for Loperfito. And one oven mitt. Back to the mitt again. Making a personal, making a personal goal to have some sizing sanctions brought to baseball if they don't already exist on that. Or I'm gonna start selling oversized oven mitts to be used as Base stealing paraphernalia. Taylor behind in the count, 0 and 1 after grounding out in the first. It would be interesting to see if someone got on base and out comes the foam finger. Or size like quadruple. I don't know what the sizing it is. I don't know. It's a 5XL oven mitt. Strike two from Thomas. So that's the kind of stuff, though, that Loperfito brings back to the lineup. I mean, for all intents and purposes, he really should be standing on first base, or at least should have been at the conclusion of the at-bat. Instead, gives Kenny Taylor an opportunity with a runner in scoring position, and suddenly a rather innocuous inning could amount to a run here if Duke's best hitter is able to come up with a two-out hit, and he does. Loperfito will be sent from third. The throw comes home in time. Georgia Tech executes perfectly. Colin Hall to McCann at the plate. Out number three occurs at home, and Georgia Tech maintains its 5-2 lead. The Yellow Jackets executing in all facets, offense, defense. A three-run lead here in game two. Maytag knows extra dirty clothes need extra cleaning power. That's why the power of the extra power button makes Maytag extra powerful. Wow. Dirt doesn't stand a chance against this kind of power. Get a load of this.
That laundry is stacked. Not bad, huh? May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. Behind this shot, there's a story. A story of well-loved cleats and pride-soaked jerseys. A story of years of support and leadership. There's a story of family. Behind every shot, there is soccer.com. Greatness grows here. Back here at the Durham Bulls Athletic Park. Replay review ongoing of the play at the plate. Joey Loperfito trying to slide in before the throw from Colin Hall arrived. Here's another look. Baseball certainly beats him to home plate. Only question is whether the tag is there. I don't really think there's any question. I think it's unless McCann dropped the ball or something, but he doesn't. So that'll be quickly upheld, you would think. And it'll be 5-2 to two as we head to the top of the third. Yellow Jackets ahead of the Blue Devils. Could have been looking at yep. whether or not McCann was obstructing Lo Profito from getting the plate before he had the ball. But the ball obviously reached McCann prior to Lo Profito getting there. Your thoughts on the obstruction rule in general? I like it. It's a safety rule. Uh, and if, if safety is not a priority for the student athlete in college baseball, then we need to figure out something else to do. So yeah. I, I'm certainly in favor of it. Uh, I'm in favor of anything that is player safety oriented, and uh, that makes a whole lot of sense. Take a look at the ACC standings now. After yesterday's results, Blue Devils at 13 and 12, Georgia Tech 16 and 9, North Carolina lost up at Pitt 7-1, and so Georgia Tech takes a one-game lead over the Tar Heels in the Coastal. Pittsburgh not giving up by any stretch of the imagination. They were sitting at 5-19 and, and on the cusp of being eliminated from the ACC tournament. Come up with a big win over the Tar Heels. Obviously, Louisville looking to clinch the Atlantic Division regular season championship for what that's worth. And certainly in line to be the number one overall seed in the ACC tournament. Still five games to play in Louisville. Certainly playing for a national seed, as are these Yellow Jackets. Baron Radcliffe will lead off for Georgia Tech. He walked and came around to score in part of that five-run second. Just a bit inside and high from Chileri. So Georgia Tech, the ACC's top offense, has just concluded each of the first two innings today with run-saving defensive plays. Yeah. That's when you know you've got things going in the right direction here as we reach the middle of May and postseason is right around the corner. Second straight pitch that got away from Chileri. Here is Nick Wilhite tracking down a ball in deep center field. And there's Colin Hall's throw. Those are three runs that have come off the board or were never put on the board. And it's a three-run game. Chileri gets the strike call that time. That one looked to be a bit outside, perhaps. Of course, he would have rather gotten that call in the second inning. Two balls and a strike. That one paints the inside corner. Two and two now to Radcliffe, who thought maybe both of those were off the plate. So two up around the head as Radcliffe tries to shake it off. And then the outside corner, the inside corner. Bit of an adventurous at bat here to lead things off in the top of the third. And then swinging through strike three is Baron Radcliffe. Third strikeout for Bill Chileri 
here in game two. Don't think that was part of the plan for Chalari to throw pitches one and two of this sequence to the backstop and then rifle in three straight strikes for the swinging strikeout. But nonetheless, good job by Chalari to battle back. Now Colin Hall takes strike one. You know, those defensive plays, too, they took three definite runs off the board. Not to mention what could have happened after that point in both the first and second innings. You alluded to it, too, the Wilhite play. Those are momentum swingers or killers. Right? They, they have more than just a one-out effect. Five two, top of the third. Over sixty pitches for Chileri. Five outs, excuse me, seven outs into his outing. The O two upstairs. And, and as great of a play that Will Height made in center field from a momentum standpoint, anytime you're on the receiving end of a an outfield assist at home plate, uh, the dugout erupts. Everybody's excited, and uh, we'll see if it carries over. So here's a deep drive to center field. Taylor settles under it at the warning track. Two outs here in the top of the third. So here's Austin Wilhite. Doubled and scored in the second inning. I'm wondering if Austin Will Height was talking up his fine defensive play that we saw last night to his brother, and his brother said, all right, I, I see what you're made of. See you and raise you. Austin, the diving play at second base. Murray charges, double clutches on the throw. Gets away from Mervis. Don't know that with the speed of Wilhite, they would have had enough time after the initial bobble. See how it's ruled. But either way, the inning will continue. Tough play here for Murray coming full speed. He knows he's got to get there in a hurry with the good speed. Just doesn't make the transition from glove to hand smoothly. Caused a little bit of a delay. Mervis. Might have had him. At first, if Mervis is able to close his glove on the ball, it would have been a very close play, even with the bobble from Murray. Tapped in fair territory by Webb. Rothenberg handles it easily, so nothing comes of the infield single and or error from Austin Wilhite. It was ruled an error. Georgia Tech leads by three. Maytag knows extra dirty clothes need extra cleaning power. That's why the power of the extra power button makes Maytag extra powerful. Wow. Dirt doesn't stand a chance against this kind of power. Get a load of this. That laundry is stacked. Not bad, huh? May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. Behind this shot, there's a story. A story of well-loved cleats and pride-soaked jerseys. A story of years of support and leadership. There's a story of family. Behind every shot, there is soccer.com. Greatness grows here.
ESPN and the ACC bring you the ACC Network live Duke games inside access and analysis. Closer you can get to Cameron without sleeping in a tent. Visit ACC, get ACCN.com to learn more. Find out if your cable provider is carrying the ACC Network. As Matt Mervis steps to the plate. Line drive right at Waddell, who had shifted from short to basically second base. It's just all come up aces for the Yellow Jackets. Every shift seems to be perfect. Every defensive play has been made, except for a couple of errors yesterday. But for the most part, it has been spot on in every regard for the Yellow Jackets. That's just a line drive off the bat right at a guy that's playing about 100 feet out of position. Mervis hit it on the screws. You got to go back to the dugout and say, OK, the scouting report was spot on. Another hard hit ball. How about Waddell again? Looks like there's five of them out there. Luke Waddell, two terrific plays. A smile from Connor Thomas knows that he's given up Two line drives. The smile returned from Waddell. This could end up being a really quick inning with some very hard contact. Waddell came into today with just five errors on the season and at shortstop playing at the highest level of college baseball, that's really, really impressive. Gallagher walked back in the first inning. Another one hit on the screws. Diving attempt by Hall. You hope he's OK. That looked a bit awkward the way he landed on his hand. We'll see if Colin Hall is all right. As it stands, a two-out single for Gallagher. He looks to be okay, thankfully. Sometimes the wrist can fold under you. Third hard hit baseball for the Blue Devils this inning. That one finally concludes with a runner on base. Great effort by Hall. You see the gloved hand get caught under the body. Great to see him emerge unscathed. First pitch to Cheek is in for a strike. At this point, you're almost surprised that the play wasn't made by Hall in the outfield, the way that Georgia Tech has been rolling. High chopper. English tags Cheek out, and now Chase Cheek goes down. Cheek tried to avoid the tag and may have hurt himself in the process. We'll check on Chase Cheek as the inning ends. Georgia Tech will come to bat in just a moment. Extra power button. Extra power button. You're looking buff. May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. RJ Shrek takes Chase Cheek's place in right field after Cheek injured his left knee trying to avoid the tag of Tristan English on the chopper to end the bottom of the third. There's a look at Shrek. Shrek came out as a pinch hitter and walked in game one. Did that for Erickson Nichols then was replaced on the base paths by Will Hoyle. And Nick Wilhite continues to have a Baron Radcliffe-like game two. He's been the star of the game for me thus far. Two for two now with a couple of singles, an excellent defensive play. Starts things off in the top of the fourth. The one thing you know, Georgia Tech certainly isn't going to feel bad for you. They're not going to sit on a 5-2 lead. They're not going to feel bad that your starting right fielder is out for the game, and that is 
I say that in the most complimentary way possible. This is just relentless, and it's allowed them to earn their way into that number eight ranking. I would imagine there's a nice, healthy competition in that dugout for offensive success. When you've got everybody in that lineup churning out hits, churning out RBIs, churning out stolen bases, it becomes fun. It becomes contagious. Everybody wants to be a part of it. A lot of times, your bench players or your role players, they want to be a part of it because it's all for the common goal, and that's winning games. And obviously, Georgia Tech is, is doing that right now, playing at a very high level. Strike from Chileri. Waddell batting for the third time. This is Waddell's ninth plate appearance in 12 plus innings. Puts a charge into that one. Shrek and Taylor unable to catch up to it. It'll be a ground rule double. Wilhite advances to third. Waddell with his second hit of the day. Now a single and a double. The designated hitter, number six, Michael Goldberg. And here's Goldberg. I'm not sure this pitch is even in the strike zone. Nope, it's above the letters. Waddell staying aggressive and off-speed pitch and just pounded it into right center field. You talked about being in the zone and you know, you've played this sport at the college level. And, you, and uh, you know, I know you're never in a hitting slump, obviously, but I'm sure you heard about it from other guys. <laughs> What's the difference in the feeling? Because this sport is not easy. I think hitting a baseball is the hardest thing to do in sports. Three out of ten gets you in the Hall of Fame. What is the difference when you go up there and the ball looks like a golf ball or the ball looks like a beach ball? Because right now you got a bunch of beach ball swings from Georgia Tech, it looks like. The mental confidence is what it's all about. And what it becomes when you're feeling good, you're comfortable, you're in a rhythm, you're not guessing on pitches. That's probably the, the biggest part of the mental. When you're in a slump, so I've been told, you're guessing. The rumors are. <laughs> you're guessing what's coming out of the pitcher's hand. Yep. When you're not in a slump, you, you don't, you're not guessing. You're just reacting. You feel like you can hit any pitch. And that's reality. Any batter can hit any pitch. But you have to take the guessing part out of it. If you're guessing, that's a road that leads straight to disaster. And I talked about it becoming contagious when your teammates are doing it. Uh, that certainly is a factor. Um, and that's why you see really, really successful teams have good success up and down the lineup. You, know, you think about the great offensive teams, certainly at the professional level, you think about the mid-70s Cincinnati Reds, you know, where the you know, outs were tough to come by for opposing teams. You know, the 27 Yankees everyone talks about. Uh, you more. watched that team, didn't you? <laughs> no, you, <laughs> you caught quite a few of those games that year. So it's it's fascinating, you know, because this is a game of failure. Yep. You fail more often than you succeed, and that's really sometimes difficult to cope with. You know, if you failed more often than you were successful in life, that wouldn't be any fun. Uh, so to have fun playing baseball, you have to accept the reality that you're going to fail as a hitter more often than you succeed. 3-2 pitch forthcoming to Goldberg. Singled in his last plate appearance in the second. Another hard hit ball. That could be extra bases. Callagher does a nice job cutting it off in left field to hold Goldberg to a single. But two more runs are going to score, and Georgia Tech takes a 7-2 lead here in the top of the fourth. I think part of it also, too, in baseball, if you're hitting well collectively, you don't feel that extra bit of pressure to think that you have to be the guy and you're swinging a little harder and you're gripping the bat a little harder. There's less pressure because you know that maybe if you don't come up with the hit, somebody else will. And just that small percentage maybe of that mental weight that gets lifted off 
probably allows you to have more success. It's not all on your shoulders in this lineup because all up and down guys can get it done. Without a doubt, and then it carries over to your pitching staff. You know, the Georgia Tech pitchers, you know, their numbers don't jump off the page. They're good, certainly, and they've had a lot of success, but their mental makeup then becomes, okay, I don't have to be perfect out here. I've got an offense that's putting up seven, eight, 10, 12 runs on any given day. And so it becomes a part of the program, not just one side of the equation, offensively or defensively. McCann's hand came off the bat, so he'll add a little more adhesive to the handle. This now becomes, you talk about pitching, this becomes an outing where Chileri needs to give his team some length as much as he possibly can. Three plus innings thus far, 78 pitches. Duke having to go into its bullpen. Three innings into game one. Jack Carey was used for 43 pitches. Eli Herrick came on to throw 22, so he's probably still available. Aaron Beasley threw 50, so he will not be somebody that can be called upon today. Mentioned Herrick a second ago. He's up and warming there. You see him for the Blue Devils, the right-hander. One inning, two hits, two runs, two strikeouts yesterday in those 22 pitches. The 1-1 one -one from Chileri. Mervis to second for one. Murray does not opt to throw back to first. So a fielder's choice. Second time McCann has reached on a fielder's choice here in the series. That'll bring Tristan English to the plate. 0 for 2 on the day, but a hard hit fly ball right to the base of the Blue Monster in the second inning. A couple of feet away from another extra base hit. A ball and no strikes. You can see the Sky is beginning to darken here at the Durham Bulls Athletic Park. A matter of when, not if, in terms of the bad weather. I thought a great job by facilities folks, staffs of both programs agreeing to move this game up. It's not ideal. You want to give everybody as much rest as possible, but the other option would have been to try to dodge the oncoming storms all day long. The 1-1 one, one misses, and it's two balls and a strike. McCann trying to advance to second, and maybe an ill-advised attempt there from McCann, running himself into out number two. Nice arm by Rothenberg. Michael Rothenberg catching the 16th would-be base stealer of the year. So now two away, and English sends that one once again toward the Blue Monster. It gets away from Gallagher. English will stand on second with two outs, and McCann may have run himself out of being run number eight for Georgia Tech. Either way, the inning continues. Another extra base hit for the Yellow Jackets. Their third of this game. Georgia Tech had eight extra base hits yesterday. That'll bring up Radcliffe. First pitch to Radcliffe misses.
Now 2-0 oh with English standing on second. That's where you get into the splitting hairs section of the game. If you're Danny Hall as a coach, you're always looking for things to try to tweak and you never want to tell your team, all right, everything's great. Nobody needs to worry about anything. So maybe a conversation to have with McCann about taking off for second base in that situation. McCann has not even attempted a stolen base on the season. The ball did not get very far away from Rothenberg, who has a good arm. But again, up 7-2, to two, looking to take the series here in Durham. Hard to complain about the situation too much if you're Coach Hall in year number 26 of the Georgia Tech dugout. Georgia Tech has now scored in eight of the 13 innings it has batted, and in every one of those innings, Yellow Jackets have scored more than one run. A two out walk for Radcliffe. That'll bring up the lefty Colin Hall. The righty Austin Wilhite in behind him. Yellow Jackets not a fan of the single run. If one is good, more is better. Nothing but twos and threes yesterday. A five spot in the second here in game two. Chilary misses low. Two more across here in the fourth. Colin Hall sends that one deep to right and gone. Another home run for the Yellow Jackets. Two more runs here in the top of the fourth. Georgia Tech showing no interest in compassion. An eight-run lead here in game two. Third home run of the season for Hall. Pitch up in the zone. Good balance, good turn. Nice swing there, just get it up and Shrek, no chance for that one. All smiles in the Georgia Tech dugout as Austin Wilhite comes to the plate. One for two. You mentioned the twos and threes yesterday. Today it's fives. There's a strike from Chilary. Herrick is warm for Duke. The two-out hitting has been one of the more impressive elements of this series so far for Georgia Tech. To be honest, it's been hard to keep track of all of the impressive things that Georgia Tech has done. This is now game number five in a row. The Yellow Jackets have scored in double digits in the game of baseball.
Georgia Tech nearly batted around again here in the fourth. Dusty Blake makes the long walk to the mound. That may be it for Bill Chileri. Wait for the signal. Truck pack out to the mound to break things up. And there is the signal. So Eli Herrick to come in. Bill Chilary's afternoon is done. We'll give you the final numbers on the Duke left-hander when we come back on ACC Network Extra. Extra power button. Extra power button. You're looking buff. May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. Eli Herrick on for the second day in a row. Mentioned an inning pitched. Two hits, two runs, two strikeouts for him. 22 pitches yesterday. There's the final line for Chileri. Ten hits, ten runs, nine of them earned. Four walks, three strikeouts. Just a tough day at the office. 90 pitches in total. So between Ben Gross and Bill Chileri, each throwing 90-plus pitches to get a total of six and two-thirds innings pitched. Chileri looked like he had an opportunity to be pretty effective early on. Obviously the one, two, three first. But the Georgia Tech offense with two outs has been magnificent. Seven for 11 on the day with two outs, four for five with runners in scoring position. And if you build Chileri, you learn from it. You say congratulations to Georgia Tech. They. They were better than I was today. And there's a good chance you might see Georgia Tech again. You know, whether that's later on this season in the postseason, next year, whatever it is. Keep good notes and live to see another day and battle back. Saw the numbers a moment ago on Herrick. Team leading 23rd appearance now. And Herrick's job is pretty simple right now. You've got to get this guy out and get in the dugout. Webb lifts that one to deep left center. Taylor retreating quickly and makes the play on the warning track just in front of the wall. Another hard hit baseball for the Yellow Jackets, but this one amounts to little more than a loud out. Five more runs in the fourth inning for the Yellow Jackets. Blue Devils with work to do offensively if they're going to get back in game two. Extra power button. Extra power button. You're looking buff. May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. Connor Thomas back out for the bottom of the fourth. 40 pitches into his outing. Three innings, six hits, two earned runs, and a walk. And this becomes now just throw strikes. Force the Blue Devils to earn their way on base. Michael Rothenberg leads things off for Duke, who flew out in the first. There's a strike. Georgia Tech outscored Western Carolina 55 to 8 series this past weekend. The 55 runs, the 50 hits, the most runs in a series since joining the league, the ACC in 1979. Rothenberg stings this one to center. Will Hyde can't make the play this time. 
So Michael Rothenberg stands on second base. That is the same exact thing he did in inning number one, except Will Height was able to make the play. This time, couldn't quite come up with it. Two very solid at bats for Rothenberg. You wonder if Rothenberg had ill thoughts as soon as the ball left the bat. And he's thinking, oh goodness, I just did the same thing again. Is he gonna track this one down? But That ball a few feet farther. A little closer to the wall, and that was the difference. Here's Maxwell, who takes a strike. Similar feeling as last night, Ryan, with Georgia Tech jumping out, jumping ahead, Duke putting together some quality at-bats and trying to grind its way back in this one. Obviously, Duke did not have an eight-run deficit at any point last night, but it was 10 to three after the top of the sixth. Blue Devils scored run in the bottom half. 10-2 here in the fourth. Rudy Maxwell grounded out back in the second inning. Interesting mindset here for Rudy Maxwell. The difference is a little less. You're just trying to get the runner over. But down by eight runs. You know you need multiple innings with multiple runs to climb back in this one. So mindset could change a little bit. Approach could change a little bit. Not just trying to get the runner over to third with less than two outs. Maybe just trying to get a base hit and well, won't have a choice now as he takes one on the wheel and heads to first with a HBP. See where this one catches him. Front leg or back leg. Back leg, I think. Pretty hard to tell as he skipped out of the way. Either way, Maxwell looks to be fine. That brings up Erickson Nichols. And Thomas now, misses with that pitch. And now the eight-run deficit is completely turned around. If this was a two- or three-run ball game, maybe even a four-run game, you're bunting here with first and second, nobody out and the nine man in the order. Thomas misses again. You know, the, the one, eh, look, first class problems. The one thing for Thomas has been he hasn't really gotten into much of a rhythm today because every, seemingly every half inning that his team bats takes 30 minutes. So somewhat understandable that he might have trouble finding the zone here in the bottom of the fourth. Behind in the count to Nichols. Two balls and no strikes is Thomas. There is a strike. Loperfito waits on deck. Two for two today. With a home run and a double. Two one pitch off the bat of Nichols through the left side. Duke will go station to station. Bases are loaded now with nobody out in the bottom of the fourth. You mentioned it. We saw this yesterday. It's amazing both offenses, just when it seems like momentum is going to the other side, seems to be able to put together a strong half inning. For Duke, it's always been to stay in the game. For Georgia Tech, it's always been to keep the game just out of reach, both yesterday and today. Thomas won't be happy when he sees the film and sees where he left that pitch, right over the plate. That ball should have been out a little further. 
Nichols able to drive it. To second for one. They'll hold the throw. Runner dives back to third. Nice play to try to catch Maxwell off third base. It'll go as an RBI fielder's choice for Loperfito. Duke plates one. 10-3 here in the bottom of the fourth. Loperfito's been aggressive against Thomas all day. First pitch swinging once again. Perhaps a conference as to whether or not Maxwell was caught off third. Umpires having a discussion right now on the third baseline. Don't know if it was in relation to anything else. This usually yields a replay as the veteran umpiring crew gets together. Meanwhile, the Georgia Tech infield gathers and they can discuss potential first and third strategy. And sure enough, we'll go, they used to say under the hood. Now they say into the dugout and into a dark room in the back, I guess. We'll take a break while we sort out the replay review. Coach Chris Pollard asking what the review is about. Plenty more to come for the Durham Bulls Athletic Park. Extra power button, extra power button. You're looking buff. May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. Joey Loper Fido at first base after reaching on a fielder's choice. The only question here is whether Rudy Maxwell dove back to third in time. Georgia Tech trying to catch him off the bag. It was English to second. Waddell faked the throw to first and threw to third base. Maxwell called safe, obviously unable to tell from that look as to whether or not he was. Umpires are taking a second look at a number of other angles. For now, the Blue Devils have scored one in the bottom of the fourth, still just one away. Your Duke have to score at least one more to feel decent about things. And now the conversation with Chris Pollard. Maxwell ruled safe at third base. So things will stay as they are. Thomas getting a few warm-up pitches in. Coach Danny Hall looking for further clarification. You feel for the umpires when they come back after the review, and they've got to talk to each head coach, and you're going to bat 500. Yeah. One of them's going to be okay, and then the other one's probably not going to be very happy. And it, it's a tough deal, uh, but I do like the replay it, it, with the intention of getting the call right. Obviously, nobody likes the amount of time that it takes. You know, saying that whether it's baseball, basketball, football, the games are too long. You hear that all the time. But if the goal is to get the call correct, then let's get on board with the replay system. And obviously, you're always looking to refine it and get it better. But uh, it's, it's similar to player safety. You know, let, let's do for the greater good, put these elements in play. My only thing with replay, because I agree with you, uh, I'm in the camp of, because you kind of have the human errors part of the game camp, and then you have the let's get the call right camp. And I'm in the same camp with you of let's get the call right. My only issue then is when you see only certain calls are reviewable or they're only reviewable at certain times, because you're inherently saying then that it's only important to get calls right when it's this call, or it's only important to get a call right in the last two minutes of a basketball game instead of the first two minutes. And at the end of the day, that possession that occurs in the first two minutes is just as valuable as the one that occurs in the final two minutes. Yeah, it, I don't know what the solution is there, because otherwise the games would take 11 hours if you had unlimited re right? You've got to draw the line somewhere, but it just seems like an odd mentality where, okay, we've got to get it right, but only if it falls into these parameters. 
Fantastic job, job there by Thomas. Steady diet of breaking pitches to Kenny Taylor. They're going to say fantastic job of communicating that point. Still no. No. Two outs now. Mervis looking to extend the inning. And Taylor there unable to get a run across even with a productive out. Now first and third. Georgia Tech thinking Loperfito might be running in this situation. Another check. High fly ball deep to right field. Drifting back is Radcliffe. Settles on the warning track and makes the play. A couple of feet away from a 10-6 game. Mervis looking for his second home run of the series. Instead, Georgia Tech leads 10-3 on the way to the fifth. Maytag knows extra dirty clothes need extra cleaning power. That's why the power of the extra power button makes Maytag extra powerful. Wow. Dirt doesn't stand a chance against this kind of power. Get a load of this. That laundry is stacked. Not bad, huh? May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. Tonight after top rank boxing, don't miss Sports Center with Kenny Main and Steve Levy. They'll be joined by Scoop Jackson to look at the impact Zion Williamson could have on New York. Plus analysis and reactions from UFC 237, including what's next for Anderson Silva, and a report on Dwayne Haskins from Redskins Rookie Minicamp. Sports Center, midnight Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Eli Herrick back out there for the Blue Devils. Got Webb to fly out to end the top of the fourth. Duke threatening in the bottom of the fourth inning, but only able to get one run across. Squaring to potentially bunt Wilhite. Two singles already on the day in two plate appearances. Couple of RBIs as well. Has scored both times he's reached base. Make it three for three with three singles, perhaps more. Wilhite takes. A wide turnaround first. And the Yellow Jackets are off and running again here in the fifth inning. Five hits now in the series, along with some stellar defense. That'll bring up Waddell for the fourth time here today. Ten plate appearances now for Waddell in the series, and we're in the top of the fifth inning of game two. There's a strike from Herrick. Strike two, the off-speed pitch. Nice breaking ball there from Herrick. If he can consistently throw that ball for strikes, obviously 
greatly increases his success rate. Pitch out, it looked like high throw from Rothenberg. A nice job by Murray to corral the throw and apply the tag. Will Height not buying the fact that he's out. We might see another review. I think Will Height thought he was safe and just stayed on the bag. Yeah, he didn't even flinch. It, Will Height's brother, Austin Will Height, had a stolen base and was caught stealing yesterday. This time, Nick Wilhite looking to steal second, thinking he was safe. We'll get another look at it here. Design pitch out. The throw slightly high from Rothenberg. A nice play by Murray to make the catch and tag. And we will have another review. Foot and glove seem to Arrive at the same time, Ty goes to the runner. Initially the call out at second base. We'll have another review. And we will take another break. Game two here at the Durham Bulls Athletic Park, Georgia Tech 10, Duke 3. Maytag knows extra dirty clothes need extra cleaning power. That's why the power of the extra power button makes Maytag extra powerful. Wow. Dirt doesn't stand a chance against this kind of power. Get a load of this. That laundry is stacked. Not bad, huh? May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. So look at Nick Wilhite and Joey Loperfito conversing near second base. We've taken a couple of looks at it. Looks as though Wilhite might be safe. It is a close play. The initial call was out at second. Tag for Murray is to really the heel and the Achilles of Wilhite. as though the foot may have beaten the tag. But we'll see. This could enter the box of close enough that you can't overturn the call that was made on the field. Although it was similar to the play last night we had where the tag upon review was basically on the back of the leg and Frank Sylvester agrees with the call made on the field after review and credit a caught stealing for Rothenberg. Will Height caught for the fourth time this year. Second runner that Rothenberg has thrown out in his many days. And then Herrick retires Waddell. So two outs in a matter of seconds for the Blue Devils. Nice fastball here. And what's interesting, when we have these reviews, obviously the time spent how collegiate players adjust to that time where you're just sitting around and you're waiting and Herrick responds there by just throwing a nice fastball past Waddell. And that can be difficult for guys to manage. That ball scoots under the glove of Murray. Another two out hit for Georgia Tech. Imagine that will go down as a hit. If it does, eight for 13 with two away. Or he did get a glove on it, sharp hit ball. Looked like he had a chance to get the body in front of it. If they ask Murray what the ruling should be, he would give himself an yeah. error. Yep. Didn't have to range as far as I initially thought. Still waiting on the official ruling. It is ruled a single. 
And so Georgia Tech is eight for 13 with two outs. Herrick bounces that one toward Rothenberg. Goldberg stays at first base. McCann at the plate. He was also thrown out by Rothenberg today. That was not ruled a caught stealing, however. Ball had gotten away from Rothenberg briefly. McCann looked to move from first to second, and Rothenberg threw him out. One ball and one strike from Herrick to Kyle McCann, who's 0 for 2 on the day, but has reached base twice, once on a walk, once on a fielder's choice. Now two and one. High fly ball off the bat of McCann. Looked like it might have been off the end of the bat and it still finds its way into the seats. Off the bat, that looked like a pop fly. Instead, it's home run number 20 on the year for Kyle McCann. That is some serious power. Ball's on the outside part of the plate. Kyle McCann just went and got it. That's impressive, very impressive. Fifth home run of the series, second of the day for the Yellow Jackets. Another multi-run inning. More two-out runs for the Yellow Jackets. Now nine two-out hits for Georgia Tech here through four and two-third innings. That's a good weekend. Conversation between Rothenberg and Herrick. Rio pitch misses, and English draws the walk. All five of Georgia Tech's runs in the second inning came with two outs. Three out of the five in the fifth inning, excuse me, the fourth inning came with two outs. And the home run here from McCann comes with two away. Ten of the 12 runs scored by the Yellow Jackets with two outs here this afternoon. in the count now to Radcliffe. Round ball to Loper Fido. On to Mervis for the third out of the inning. 
Georgia Tech plates two. He extends the lead to nine here in the fifth. Yellow Jackets looking for win number 35 on the season. McCann with home run number 20 here in the Bull City. Welcome back to Durham as we head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. ACC baseball headlines. You see Georgia Tech and Louisville there. Six total teams in the top 25. Certainly Georgia Tech and Louisville playing for potential national seeds as we approach late May. ACC tournament will be right here in Durham. Four teams vying for the final two spots, Duke and Georgia Tech having already clinched. So we know they'll be at the Durham Bulls Athletic Park for the ACC Championship, which starts Tuesday, May 21st. First pitch swinging for Murray. And there's one away here in the bottom of the fifth. Sixty pitches even for Connor Thomas. Four and a third innings pitched. Eight hits, three runs, a walk, and a strikeout. Deals a strike to Kyle Gallagher, who has walked and singled here this afternoon. And another strike from the left hand of Thomas. Amos Willingham threw 67 pitches yesterday, was lifted after five innings. Nobody warming for Georgia Tech. Thomas has thrown more than 100 pitches on two different occasions this year, so he certainly can go the distance if needed. Gallagher to Hopper to Webb at third, deals with the nasty bounce well and throws across in time. Makings of a quick inning for Connor Thomas. R.J. Shrek, who replaced Chase Cheek in right field. Cheek injured himself trying to avoid a tag from Tristan English down the first base line on a ground ball. English stepped into the baseline to apply the tag. Chase tried to stay, step out of the way, hurt his knee in the process, so Shrek replaced him in right field. This is R.J. Shrek's first at bat here in game two. Came out as a pinch hitter in game one and walked. Shrek has seen some spot duty over the course of the season. Playing in his 19th game, he has started eight games. Highlight of his rookie campaign was a key run scoring base hit in the win over East Carolina. Two two pitch. Now three and two. Shrek swings the full count pitch from Thomas. Another 3-2. Chopper towards second. Charging it is Wilhite. Nice play. Sidearm throw for Austin Wilhite. One, two, three inning for Thomas as Shrek is retired. Yellow Jackets back to work on offense when we return. Eli Herrick back to work for Duke. 23 pitches into his outing. One and a third innings pitched so far. He'll deal with Hall, Wilhite, and Webb. Yellow Jackets certainly look well on their way to a series win here in Durham.
Georgia Tech with series wins this year in the ACC against Virginia, Louisville, Notre Dame, North Carolina, Boston College, Virginia Tech, and Clemson. The only series loss on the road to Miami. Actually, one game, one of that series in 10 innings. Lost games two and three back in early March. It's been two months since the Yellow Jackets have lost a series in league play. Hall with a three-run home run in his last at bat. That came in the fourth inning. Ground ball to Murray. Throw is in time. One away. Here's Austin Wilhite. Single and a double. Two for three days so far for the Georgia Tech second baseman. Second st straight miss on a breaking pitch for Herrick. Two balls and no strikes. Now 3-0. There's a strike from the right-hander. The Wilhite Twins, five for six combined today thus far. There's another strike from Herrick, who's battled back to work the count full. Two is called strike three. Second strikeout of the day for Herrick. There are two away in the sixth. When Georgia Tech returns to Durham for the ACC tournament, as we take a look at the called strike three from Herrick, the Yellow Jackets will be looking for their sixth ACC tournament championship since 2000. They sit at five, which is tied for the most amongst league teams with Florida State. Georgia Tech won the ACC tournament in 2000, 2003, 2005, 2012, and most recently in 2014. We mentioned the Seminoles with five, Clemson, and Virginia, and North Carolina all with two titles since 2000. And I would imagine this weekend series will give Georgia Tech some confidence. Win or lose, just the nice familiarity of playing in this ballpark. Yeah, a little bit of a different ballpark to play in because of the short porch in the left, tall wall, different kind of carom than you might be normally used to, especially if you're a left fielder. Eric tries to go upstairs, but Webb stays away we see the blue monster here at the durham bulls athletic park beautiful place for baseball 2-2 two, two misses another full count Both of the runs Herrick has given up this afternoon are unearned. 
Duke with three errors on the day. It's way upstairs. And then Webb trots down to first base. Errors charged at Mervis, Murray, and Cheek. Looks like they went back and gave Murray an error on the play that was originally called a single. Murray, that becomes the sixth error on the season. So here's Wilhite with two away. Rothenberg thought about a throw down to first base in behind Webb. Three singles for Nick Wilhite this afternoon. Two runs driven in, two runs saved with a nice defensive play in center field. Eric misses again, and he's lost the strike zone here a bit. Six straight balls. Excuse me, five straight. 2 0 -oh pitches high. And now six straight. This is when Georgia Tech has done most of the damage here this afternoon with two away. There's a strike. Kyle Sally warming for Duke. Sally appeared yesterday. Threw five pitches to get two outs including a strikeout. The 3-1 from Herrick. Throw down from Rothenberg in time. Michael Rothenberg casting some doubt as to whether they should continue to test his arm. Another throw from his knees. Webb is retired. Blue Devils are out of the inning. And will bat leading off with Rothenberg when we return. After earning the final out of the top of the six with his arm, Michael Rothenberg looking to do some work with the bat. First pitch swinging right at third base. One down in the bottom of the sixth. Here's Rudy Maxwell, who was hit by a pitch in his last plate appearance. Back in the fourth inning. He takes a strike. We had a nice discussion about unwritten rules in baseball. That was one right there that is often overlooked. When the leadoff batter swings at the first pitch and puts it in play and records an out, 99% of the time that next batter's taking the first pitch. And certainly Maxwell appeared to have been taking, didn't seem to have an overly aggressive approach. And Thomas probably knew that he was going to take, so he just grooved a fastball right in there. And sure enough, called strike one because as an offense for obvious reasons not a great idea to have the pitcher throw two strikes and get two outs 2-2 two, two, foul away just now getting up near 80 pitches is Thomas Strikeout of Maxwell. Second strikeout of game two for Connor Thomas. And that'll bring up Erickson Nichols with two away. Nice breaking pitch there. Maxwell swung right over the top of it.
Another first pitch strike for Thomas. Nichols lifts that one into short right center. And so with two away, he reaches first. Steps Joey Loperfito. Try to keep the inning alive. Quickly ahead, 0-2 is Connor Thomas. Nice play by English at first. A quick inning for the Georgia Tech left-hander. We head to the top of the seventh. 12-3 Yellow Jackets here in game two. Kyle Sally on to replace Eli Herrick. Herrick two to third innings, two runs, neither of them earned. Two walks, two strikeouts, two hits allowed. 44 total pitches. Got to figure his weekend is probably done after consecutive appearances and 66 pitches in total. Kyle Sally comes on, the left-hander, for the second day in a row. Five pitches yesterday to get two outs. Will Hoyle has come on. Defensively for the Blue Devils. Couple of defensive changes for Duke. We'll get to those in just a second. Numbers on Sally, 1-0 on the season, 3.18 ERA, 11 and a third innings pitched. Only four earned runs allowed, but 10 runs overall. Been a bit unlucky defensively. 12 strikeouts to nine walks. Steve Mann is in center field. Will Hoyle at shortstop. Matt Steinbeiser has come on to replace Rothenberg in behind the plate. Nick Wilhite starts his at bat over after Webb was thrown out at second base and he begins the top of the seventh inning with a hit. The shortstop number seven, Luke Waddell. Only his fourth of the day. He'll find the rhythm eventually. Last night, two for four with two runs batted in and a run scored. Also drew a walk. Georgia Tech won't be able to wait to get back here for the ACC tournament. Mick Wilhite may just stay here. Why bother going back to Atlanta to get out of the groove that he's in? Today, four for four, four singles. A couple of runs scored. Sally bounces that one in front of Steinbeiser, so Wilhite will advance to second. Here's a look at Steinbeiser, appearing in his 16th game of the year. Nick Wilhite came into the series with a 294 batting average. This late in the year, hard to move the needle too much. That average has risen 21 points in about a game and a half. High and tight on Waddell as Sally loses the Georgia Tech leadoff hitter. Not of the inning, but in the lineup. 
That'll bring Goldberg to the plate with runners at first and second and nobody out. Georgia Tech looking for more. Good shot of, there of Waddell getting his oven mitt on. Could be a brewing controversy now about the size of the oven mitts. Spearheaded by one Ryan Craig. As Sally drops in a breaking pitch for strike one. Goldberg digs in. A couple of hits, a couple of RBIs today. I guess you could say the same about the size of a glove. So if you're applying a tag and the glove is oversized. There are regulations on the glove. See? Can't be out there with a peach basket. See? It's about time for the oven mitt to fall in line. We'll have to ask somebody about that. Maybe we can get in touch with Frank Sylvester tonight. Alpesto warming for the Blue Devils. Goldberg lays off that pitch. Scheduled 1 o'clock first pitch tomorrow. Would not be surprised if that was moved up in similar fashion with today's game. The inclement weather could put a damper on the local college's commencement exercises, which obviously would be unfortunate. Ryan, do you recall your graduation day here at Duke? Barely. It's getting farther and farther in the distance. Good weather, though, that day. The 1-2. Goldberg could not hold up. He strikes out for the second time today. Now two for five on the afternoon. Good sweeping breaking pitch comes all the way across the plate. Goldberg could not hang on. The old Farmer's tales, or whatever you want to call them these days, you know, about rain on a wedding day. Does that also apply to rain on a graduation day? And to be honest, I don't even know what the rain on a wedding day means. <laughs> I was going to say, do we even know what that is or what that means? Kyle McCann at the plate means anybody in the first 20 rows needs to look out if they're sitting in the outfield. Home run number 20 earlier in this game. It came in the fifth inning. Count evens at one and one. Do you recall your wedding day? Absolutely. Did it rain? It poured the night before. And our we didn't really have a great plan B. Our wedding was outside. <laughs> without a great plan B. And if it had rained about 10 hours later than it did, we would have been off to a rocky start. Oh, dear. Did I say 20 rows? Yeah, OK. Look out if you're in the first 20 rows. That, that felt about right. I think that was 12 or 13 in. Home run number 21 on the season for McCann. He's now got seven in the last seven games. Had 10 home runs in a 10-day span in early March, from March 1st to March 10th. And the Yellow Jackets weren't playing slouches at that point. A three-game series against Northwestern, a pair of games against Kennesaw State, and then that Miami series that I alluded to earlier down in Coral Gables. 10 home runs in those 10 days, seven four-baggers in the last seven games now. 21 on the season. English lifts that one to left field. Gallagher makes the catch for the second out. These McCann home runs, these are no doubters. That one that was off the end of the bat, 
even felt somehow like there was little to no doubt. That one was crushed. 15-3 the score. McCann answers Radcliffe's six RBI day yesterday with five of his own today. We saw McCann there in the dugout, all smiles and high fives and fist bumps, and every one of them is well-deserved for this afternoon's performance as well as the season performance now, 21 home runs. And I hate to say I told you so, but back early in this game, I did feel like McCann's 0 for performance last night could yield big things for the catcher from Georgia Tech. And sure enough, in Steph Curry form today, he has responded. Sally retires Radcliffe on strikes, but McCann does more damage. Georgia Tech by a dozen here in game two. 15-3 Georgia Tech, 15 runs on 14 hits, a day after scoring 14 runs on 15 hits. Steve Mann steps to the plate, first pitch swinging, a ground ball to Waddell. One away, Mann now 0 for 9 on the season appearing in his 10th game of the year. Here's Matt Mervis, 0 for 3 on the day. Put a charge in one back in the fourth inning, came down on the warning track. Thomas has just been dealing strikes. 84 pitches through six and a third. That ball is fair. It was off of English, it looked like, and then off of the first base umpire, Thomas Newsom. Don't see that very often. We've seen some strange things in a game in two thirds. Let's see what this one yields. Off the glove, off food twice. Looked like off the thigh, and then Newsom took it off the chest. And he's not a thick man. That's it's like hitting the out of bounds stake on the golf course. More first pitch swinging for the Blue Devils. Hoyle lifts that one in the shallow center. Not going to be a problem for Will Height. Two away. Brings up Kyle Gallagher with two outs. Great strike or strike to ball ratio there. You saw 65 to 21. Obviously, Thomas came into today having yielded only 15 walks all season. Gave up the one he has issued fairly early. But he has cruised for the most part since the first inning. Only one run allowed. That was in the fourth. The 2-0 pitch is sent into left field. Gallagher, two for three now on the day. No substitutions as of yet for Georgia Tech. I wonder if that will begin to happen in the eighth inning. Shrek takes a strike. Mervis at second, Gallagher at first.
Robert Winborn starting to get loose for the Yellow Jackets as Shrek lifts that one toward Hall. In relatively deep left field, another quick inning. 15-3 Yellow Jackets through seven. Al Pesto comes on for his fourth appearance of the season, but second this week has been battling a back injury for the better part of three years. Finally, seems to have a grip on how to avoid trouble with that injury. Pitched on Fe February 23rd this year, March 20th, May 8th, and now again today. Limited numbers on Pesto on the season. Four scoreless innings. Pesto did not pitch the last two years. Back in 2016, as a freshman, appeared in 15 games. It was a quality arm out of the bullpen. 19 and two-thirds innings pitched, only four earned runs allowed, 21 strikeouts to six walks, an ERA under two, and then just couldn't keep the back healthy. Really a shame, as you mentioned the numbers there, and he looked really good and was a very promising prospect as a freshman and unfortunately the health bug got him but great to see him back in action this year as a senior getting some mound time see that good movement right there on the fastball natural movement he's got on the release chase murray batting for georgia tech in for Colin Hall. Murray started the season, preseason All-ACC. Began the year in left field, suffered an oblique injury, missed a bunch of time, and by the time he got back, who are you gonna take out of the lineup? You talk about potent offense, you bring an All-ACC player off the bench in Chase Murray. He looks at ball one. Murray from Cincinnati, Ohio. We've already alluded to the big red machine. Bench, Perez, Morgan, Concepcion. A little before Murray's time. And Murray is retired on strikes. Third strikeout of the season for Pesto. One up, one down here in the top of the eighth. The second baseman, number 14, Austin Wilhite. That'll bring up Austin Wilhite. Couple of hits today. Doubled and scored in the second. Singled and was stranded in the fourth. Also reached on an error in the third. Struck out looking in the sixth. Takes a strike here. Tomorrow will be Austin's turn to turn in a defensive gem for the family. Bragging rights. He's way behind in the hits, though. He's only got three in two games, which for most people would feel pretty good. Brother Nick, a four-for-four four day today on the heels of yesterday's two-for-four. One, two count, Pesto ahead of Austin Wilhite. Wilhite goes down and grabs that one, drifting foul. Shrek runs out of room. You mentioned yesterday how little room there really is in foul territory here at the Durham Bulls Athletic Park once you get, especially once you get past the bases.
Yep, the real estate down the line is at a premium. Also have to contend with the bullpens, which are in play. Nasty stuff from Pesto gets Wilhite swinging. Steinbeiser will finish the job, and there are two away. Obviously, space limitations dictate a lot of the planning, but I'd like to see bullpens taken out of the field of play. Totally agree with you on that. Player safety. Both ways. Yep. Fielders running over the mound, and then I don't know how more catchers and pitchers don't get hit by batted balls. I know there's somebody there to protect, but that one person isn't going to be able to cover all that ground. Somehow, some way, in all of my odd responsibilities as a baseball player, never had that duty bestowed upon me, the watch out guy for the bullpen action. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I have to ask some of my former coaches why I never got the call for that. It's either a lack of trust in that, in that you could perform the duties assigned or they felt like it was beneath you. You were a far too important member of the team to be sent down yonder when you could have such a, an uplifting effect in the dugout. Judging by all of the duties I did have, I'm going to go <laughs> primarily with option A and leave <laughs> option B on the, on the table. Two balls and a strike now to Jackson Webb. Only Georgia Tech starter without a hit here in game two, although he's reached base twice via the base on balls. Pitch away from a third walk. And he will take his base. Yellow Jackets still have yet to put the ball in play against Pesto. Two strikeouts and a walk of the first three hitters. So here is Nick Wilhite, perfect four for four. Four singles here today. Came around to score three of the four times he reached base. Off speed pitch in for a strike. I guarantee you, Nick Wilhite is putting some pressure on himself. A five hit day is a remarkable accomplishment. And obviously, the score being what it is at 15 to 3, there's no pressure for a key hit or a key RBI or a key opportunity to move the runner over. Nobody for Georgia Tech has five hits in a game this season. All of the offensive accomplishments. Nobody has done that yet. Well, I hope for his sake he can stay patient, stay focused here. And you, know, you always root for a young man to have a five hit afternoon. High and away, three balls and a strike. With today's four hits, Nick Wilhite. Crosses the 50-hit threshold. Now six different batters for the Yellow Jackets with 50-plus hits this year. The 3-1 misses. Will Hyde takes his walk. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, then back-to-back -back walks for Pesto here in the top of the eighth.
Waddell swinging at the first pitch from Pesto. Nichols gives chase, but it's five or six rows deep. Waddell fouled that one off his foot, and you could see him go down immediately. It's been a tough game. Waddell took that one off the foot. Chase Cheek injured his knee. Colin Hall nearly hurt his wrist. His hand rolling up under his body after a diving attempt in left field. Hmm. Training staff out to talk to Waddell. Waddell with the protective pad on that front foot, but this one seemingly straight down off the on the foot rather than the lower leg. He's gonna tough this one out, dig back into the batter's box, and await the 0-2. Still bounces the 0-2. Still no fair balls put in play off the bat. No Georgia Tech hitters against Pesto here in the eighth. Two strikeouts, two walks. The 1-2. What else? Somehow stays alive. See, the stuff of Pesto is, is pretty nasty. So much time away from live action. Imagine it's about finding a rhythm for him now. The one, two drops in for strike three. Waddell can only laugh as he's called out on strikes. A pair of walks with three strikeouts for Al Pesto in relief. Head to the bottom of the eighth here in Durham. We've talked a few times about the ACC tournament back here at the Durham Bulls Athletic Park. There you see a couple of the particulars about the event. Both of these teams will be a part of the ACC baseball tournament. Robert Winborn is on for Georgia Tech. The extremely successful day for Connor Thomas is complete. Seven innings, 11 hits scattered among those seven innings, but only three runs allowed. A walk and two strikeouts needed 91 pitches for those seven innings. Winborn's sixth appearance on the year. Four and two thirds innings pitched, giving up a couple of runs in the process. Kent DeColvey, Dan Quisenberry style hurler here. The sidearm, submarine-esque delivery. From a conventional lefty to a submarine righty. It's a slight adjustment for the Duke hitters. Steinbeiser's eighth appearance on the season, two for eight at the plate. Lifted to shallow left. Charging the play is Murray. 
And Steinbeiser is in to second base with a leadoff double. So now three for nine in ACC play, I should say. Four for 15 overall on the season for Steinbeiser. Murray looked as though he wasn't sure whether to try to catch that with his glove above his head or drop it down low. Maybe got caught in between and ran out of time. Yeah, and unfortunately for Murray, his first step was back, which is a good conservative play. Like I said, just unfortunate for him. Then couldn't make up the ground in time to track the ball before it landed on the surface in a leadoff double for Steinbeiser. First extra base hit for Matt Steinbeiser in his collegiate career, freshman. He'll tell his grandkids that he banged one off the wall rather than blooping one in at the Bermuda Triangle. The 0-2 fouled away by Maxwell. Cole Newber has come on in right field for Baron Radcliffe for Georgia Tech. Cameron Turley in behind the plate. Maxwell is retired on strikes. Charlie Benson, another defensive substitute, replacing Waddell at shortstop. Both teams a chance to get some reserves some time. There's Newbert on to make the play. Steinbeiser back to second, two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Joey Loperfito, final hope for the Blue Devils in the bottom of the eighth. Two for four on the day with two runs batted in. That's a home run and a double. I've always wondered how you start throwing like Winborn throws. Nobody's teaching you that right away. It's not like you show up to baseball camp and they say, all right, here's the submarine day. Is that something you just start doing on the side for fun and you realize you might be decent at it and maybe you don't have the natural stuff overhand so it's a way for you to prolong your career? You're probably playing in the backyard or on the street and you're trying to get the guy out and try something and... Say, so, hey, this works. English has been busy today over at first base. Loperfito is retired on the ground ball. 12 run lead for Georgia Tech as we head to the ninth. Kind of a bizarre box score there. 14 hits to 12, but 15 runs to three. Three errors having something to do with it. Duke actually hitting 343 as a team today. Nearly keeping up with the 378 that Georgia Tech has hit. Just a matter of leaving runners on base. Duke has left 10 on. Georgia Tech's left seven. Pesto out for another inning of work. Biggest difference is the batting with runners on base. Georgia Tech 9 for 17, including 5 for 8 with runners in scoring position. 
Blue Devils, on the other hand, just four for 15 with runners on base and three for 11 with runners in scoring position. And we've talked all afternoon long about the two out prowess of this Georgia Tech lineup today. They've been exceptional in that regard. First pitch strike to Jamie Taylor, who has come on now to hit for Goldberg. Nichols across in time. So here's Cameron Turley, his first plate appearance of the series. Turley on the year. 0 for 5 at the plate. Has drawn four walks and scored a couple of runs. This is the 10th game in which he has appeared. As we look ahead to tomorrow, a couple of young right-handers scheduled to be on the mound for Georgia Tech. Freshman right-hander, Court Rodick against sophomore right-hander Bryce Jarvis for the Blue Devils. Pesto induces the swing and miss there from Turley. Fans should be advised once again possible time change due to the weather. The weather tonight, not supposed to be great. Weather tomorrow night, supposed to be even worse. Severe thunderstorms, hail. The 2-2 pitch, check swing, grounded foul. Only the Wilhite brothers, Tristan English and Jackson Webb, remain in the lineup that started the day for Georgia Tech. That's a long road back for Al Pesto. Three years with a back injury. You mentioned how great it is to see him pitching now in his senior season. Another strikeout. That's four strikeouts for Pesto. Out of the five outs that he's gotten. The first base to number 11, Tristan English. If Pesto can continue to work his way back into being a regular option. That certainly deepens the Duke bullpen as they continue to try to make a push to solidify a long run potentially in the ACC tournament or lock up if they don't win that tournament and that large bid in the NCAAs. The 0-1 to English misses low and inside. No coach will tell you that they already have too much depth in a pitching staff. Blue Devils already going deeper into their staff than they expected earlier on in the season. Extra base hit for English as the throw from Gallagher comes in late. A double for Tristan English with Graham Stinson and Adam Lasky missing a significant portion of the season. Lasky has returned. Stinson has not to this point. Cole 
Pitch just stayed up in the strike zone there, and English was able to turn on it. Mutual of America banner on the blue monster there, getting some free advertising. English now back into the team lead in doubles with 15. Colin Hall had stolen that honor away from him. Here's Cole Newber. One for 12 on the season, appearing in his 15th game. That one hit, however, left the yard. Solo home run. Feast or famine for Nuber this year. The 2-0 from Pesto is called the strike. Balls and a strike now. Is that one? And away from Rothenberg. English stays at second base. Swung on and missed. Pesto a strike away from ending the top of the ninth. Swung on and missed. Five strikeouts in two innings for Al Pesto. Solid outing for him. Blue Devils, their final chance coming up on the other side of the break. Steve Mann steps in against Robert Winborn. Man grounded out. In his first at bat. Winborn ahead 0 and 2. Fly ball down the right field line. A couple of rows deep. Count remains no balls and two strikes. There's a single for Steve Mann. His first hit of the year. It's on as the leadoff hitter here in the bottom of the ninth. Aaron Therian comes on to hit for Matt Mervis. Therian 0 for 1 on the season. Second game that he has appeared in. 
Durham, North Carolina native. Takes ball two. There's a strike from Winborn. Duke obviously on the short end of the stick today, but good to get some reserves into the, the game in these latter innings for experience. Also always nice when local kid has a chance to play in his hometown ballpark. Three balls and a strike to Therian. Winborn delivers strike two. Chopper to third. Webb across the diamond in time. Will Hoyle will come on to bat as man advances to second. Hoyle, another Durham native. Jordan High School. Therian went to Durham Academy. I think today all started with the ability of Connor Thomas to bounce back. Great play by Nick Wilhite in center field. Ended the bottom of the first when it looked like the Blue Devils were going to score four, maybe more runs. And then it's Wilhite with two outs getting things started for the Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech scored five two-out runs in the second after that great defensive play. 5-2 Georgia Tech at that point. Another five in the fourth. Duke answered with one in the bottom half of that inning, but another pair for the Yellow Jackets in the fifth. And from that point on, it felt like it was going to be a bridge too far for the Blue Devils. 12-3 at that point, headed to the bottom of the fifth. And then Thomas does a great job scattering those 11 hits leaving runners on base and now Georgia Tech heads into game three with an entirely rested bullpen you would think as Damon Lux comes on as a pinch hitter Georgia Tech has had an offensive answer for two days now and they've been terrific in doing that and obviously Thomas settled in and, and ended up having a nice outing. Helped out tremendously by a couple of defensive plays. Obviously you mentioned Will Height's catch in center field and then in the second inning, the fine throw and catch to gun down Loperfito to end that inning at the plate. 14 runs yesterday, 15 runs today. You know, we talked about confidence earlier in today's game, and that's a big part of of sports. And, and that Georgia Tech dugout, you could almost, if confidence was a liquid, it would be pouring out. They'd be drowning right now in the dugout. And you have to give credit to Coach Hall and the Yellow Jacket coaching staff, the culture that they've created for this team potentially something very special going on in Atlanta for 2019. 
Lux 0 for 6 on the season, looking for his first hit. The count even now, two balls and two strikes. Winborn a strike away from giving Georgia Tech the series win here in the Bull City. The 2-2. Skied to left, Murray settles underneath, and Georgia Tech wins game two, 15 to three. Thomas gets the win for the Yellow Jackets. Seven innings of three-run ball. It was Kyle McCann's turn today to nearly duplicate what Baron Radcliffe did yesterday, two for four, a couple of home runs, five RBIs. Colin Hall with three runs batted in, a pair each for Waddell, Goldberg, and Wilhite. Lead-off home run for Joey Loperfito, but little else for the Blue Devils offensively. Georgia Tech moves to 35 and 14 on the season, 17 and nine in ACC play. Blue Devils drop a 28 and 21 on the year and an even 13 and 13 in the Atlantic Coast Conference. For Art Chase and the rest of our broadcast crew, I'm Ryan Craig. We'll see you tomorrow, one o'clock, possibly earlier for game three on ACC Network Extra.